this is Brandon with Node, and today I'm going to demonstrate to you how to configure your Windows 7 Professional or Windows 7 Ultimate computer for remote control by RDP, the Remote Desktop Protocol. Now this is a method which is real easy to, to do, but requires a little bit of modification in two or three places for you to successfully set it up. Now, this is only going to work on Windows 7 Professional or in Windows 7 Ultimate. It's not going to work in the Home Editions because Microsoft has it explicitly disabled there. Now, here's how you do it. You first click on the flag, and from there, you need to right-click on My Computer and go to Properties. Once you're in the My Computer Properties, which can be accessed from the control panel as well. I believe it is by looking for the system menu here. Once you're in this place, then you need to click on the remote settings button here. Now, this is the system properties remote tab. On a Windows XP computer, right-clicking my computer and going to properties would just bring up a, an interface very similar to this. So. That's the, the main difference between Windows 7 and Windows XP. The remote tab is where all the magic happens. And there's two things that, have, that, that you'll see in here, but only one of them matters for using RDP and the remote desktop connection. That's the second option. The second option has a radio button that says, allow connections from computers running any version of remote desktop. There is also another option, but this uh, adds a little bit more complexity to it. So usually this option is the one that gets selected. Now, selecting users is also very important because if you don't have a user on this computer which has a password associated to it or uh, an administrator account that doesn't have a password, then you're, you're going to have to set that up first. You can't do this unless you have a user account with a password. In this case, I've got a user here that's already added, but I could, um, if I had other users which were added to my local computer, such as various other user accounts on this computer, then I could add those users right here and create a new user. By creating a new user, that or using my user, I would need to browse to the uh, to my local PC here, and then to where the from this location is my my PC name, and then I would need to click Advanced, Find Now, and it's going to actually enumerate all of this computer's local users. If I was to add uh, a user from the users menu, then they would show up in this list. So all system administrators by default have access, you know, are uh, this user, the users can connect to this computer, and any members of the administrators group can connect even if they are not listed. So when we want to see who is a member of the administrators group, actually, we're going to do that by right-clicking on my computer and going to manage. So when we do this, it's going to bring up the, uh, the correct console to drill into our users. So we have to expand the local users, and then if we look, there's the users here, and there's the groups, and the administrators group, and there's certain people added in here. So you have to add the user, which you could create a new user or use the existing user you typically log in with, and then make sure that that user is added into the um, the, li the list of administrators, and that can be done from here. Uh, so you know, usually it's just add, advanced, find now, and then click the user and add. So that's the the process for enabling the proper security and things. Now, once you have all those things done, all you have to do is simply hit OK. And if you had another computer which was sitting right next to, you know, your computer you wanted remote control on your local network, you could just remote into it. But let's say you want to get into this computer from some other uh, PC on the internet remotely. Now, to do that, you actually need to first find out what is the IP address of your router. 
So I'm just going to go to a command prompt and type ipconfig. I clicked on the flag, I just typed cmd, and I hit run, which is the command prompt. I did an ipconfig command, then it tells me my router's internal IP address, which I can then easily um, access by going to its IP address. Now, of course, it wants me to log in here, and um, I'm going to go ahead and do that. And in this case, this is a D-Link router, and you know, I'm just going to, to demonstrate. Uh, I mean, in here, I would have to go under like advanced or, or something like that, and then it, it'll enable me to forward ports. So you have to forward the port, which is numbered 3389. Now this port is not open on my on mine right now, so I'm going to do that. I'm just going to go ahead and say, what is this computer I'm on? What is its local IP address? 192.168.99.158. So I'm going to actually say, okay, uh, 192.168.99.158. And, you know, I could select, you know, okay, great. If I selected this, then it would actually probably use the correct port. But I'm just going to, I'm just going to say 3389. 3389 is always the port that's used for this. Um, in this particular interface, you know, this is how this is done. This is not necessarily how everybody, how everybody's interfaces work. This is just a D-Link router. To learn how to forward a port for your router, simply go and look it up. Uh, Linksys forward port. Um, how? Okay, great. There you go. I mean, here's uh, a lot of articles and videos and things like that. Most of the time, if I'm really curious, if it's something, I'll go directly to the manufacturer's website, find the manual I'm looking for for my model of router or firewall, and look in there how to do it. Um, if your internet service provider is in charge of, um, of actually maintaining and managing your, your internet router, you can just call them and say, listen, I don't know how to do this. I need to forward a port in my router. How do I do it? Now, once the port is forwarded, there's still another step because your public IP address on the internet that your internet provider is, is giving you changes periodically, pretty regularly. And so you actually need to use something like dyndns.org to solve this problem. dyndns.org is a fantastic site which allows you to actually create dynamic host names. So, uh, in, in this case, it's $30 a year uh, which is just you know a fantastic price but what what this does is it actually enables you to install a special piece of software onto your computer or use the features built into your router already and most routers I've seen for consumers have a, a dyndns.org uh, connection already in there for you so you plug in your username and password into your router for your Dyna account, and then you tell it what host to use. So some people, I mean, it'll give you a bunch of different domain name options, but it'll let you create a host. And it might be um, uh, yourname.shack.moo, or it could be, um, they've got like a dozen or two dozen different domains that you can register various various names for. So you use this, you point a name at your uh, actual computer here via this special software that updates their site and then whenever you, you are on a remote computer you open the RDP client up and you just type in your domain name which you know like I said I mean it might be your name dot um, uh, you know this Dyna DNS domain.org or .com or dot .whatever, it doesn't matter. As long as it's a host name that's easy for you to remember and it's associated with an IP address. So if you were to ping this host name by, you know, ping, um, you know, such and such dot this domain dot com, if it replies, um, you know, in this case, that's actually, okay, yeah, request timeout, request timeout, and uh, if it replies, then, you know, you know it's it's actually working for you. If it doesn't, well, uh, your router might not be allowing it to reply or something like that. Either way, this is just a real easy method to set this up and, and to actually uh, quite easily, uh, with a few steps, editing your router and getting a DynaDNS account 
how you can remotely connect to and control your computer via RDP. Now, of course, you can really only forward that for one connection per network because, you know, typically, unless you're doing some real crazy things and modifying RDP port numbers on different machines. So you're only, if you have a home computer or something and you want to remote into it, this is how you would set that up without having to have anything special. There is one alternative I highly recommend, www.logmein.com. And this is a fantastic application, which is uh, free and has different uh, paid products as well and professional editions to remote control your computer. I use this quite frequently myself. So those are some tools to help you actually remote access and, and uh, support yourself and uh, you know possibly your team with using simple tools that are, that are freely available and, and accessible to everybody.